Hello there. A couple months ago, I did a video all about the fact that espresso doesn't die after 10 seconds. Now, this was a myth and a phrase that was thrown out there a long time ago, pretty much only to make baristas work faster. For example, if you as the barista are told that your shot will be dead and useless after 10 seconds, you'll be more motivated to get that shot from the bar into the drink, make the drink and get it served as quickly as possible. However, when it comes down to it, your espresso should have a much longer life than just 10 seconds. It doesn't just kind of disappear appear and dissipate after 10 seconds. You still can drink it and enjoy it. And in fact, something that we talked about a little bit in that video is the fact that you may even be able to enjoy your espresso more after a little bit of waiting time. And today I'm gonna show you one of my favorite hacks related to that fact. When we pull espresso, we use water that is very, very warm, generally in between the range of 195 degrees Fahrenheit to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. It is similar to brewing temperature that we use for like pour overs or batch brewers. By the Way, that is between 90 degrees Celsius and 96 degrees Celsius. I checked. <laughs> that is a very, very warm drink. Now, by the time the drink, the espresso is in the cup and being served to you, it has cooled down a little bit, but still you are drinking something that is quite, quite hot and your taste buds and your tongue aren't necessarily able to decipher the different flavors that are found in that drink when you are kind of blasting it with a very, very high temperature. And just to fully demonstrate what I'm talking about here, I'm gonna go pull an espresso right now. My temperature that I usually heat my Ranchilio at is about 200 degrees for brewing temp. So I'm gonna go do that. We will check the temperature and I'll explain a little bit more in depth. This is a complete side note here. At home, I frequently like to use a WDT tool. This little spiky boy you see frequently around the internet. I actually stole this from Lance Hedrick. So uh, Lance, if you want this back, you're gonna have to pay me to ship it to Portugal. <laughs> Now I have my puck already right here and I'm gonna be using cups that are already pre-warming on top of my espresso machine. I've got two little demi-toss cups right here. Now, I keep these just kind of seated nicely on top of my espresso machine on most days because when I turn my espresso machine on in the morning, it heats up as one does. <laughs> and by having the cup sitting on top, a lot of that heat will transfer into the ceramic, which leaves you with nice preheated cups for when you're ready to pull your espresso. This is pretty common practice for home baristas and it's also pretty common practice in cafes. If you go into most cafes, cafes, you will notice that the cups are all stacked on top of the machine so that the baristas are very easily able to grab them as they are making the drinks. And it's a similar practice of also preheating the cups as you go. Then we just uh, start our espresso. I'm never entirely sure if I've lined these up correctly. I did a pretty good job lining them up today. It doesn't always go that well. Okie dokie, we have two freshly pulled espressos. I have a thermometer here. We're gonna check the temperature that they are currently sitting at. Okay, so these espressos are currently at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And then on to tasting. Glasses fogging up aside, this is a pretty warm beverage. I mean, 150 degrees is drinkable. But that being said, you aren't able to necessarily pick out a ton of notes from it. This is a lighter coffee. It's a light roast. It's a single origin uh, Ethiopian coffee. It's very, very tasty. Traditionally, it is pretty fruit forward. It's kind of on that tropical fruit side, but you aren't necessarily able to get a ton of that up front. We're gonna give this about a minute to kind of rest here and cool a little bit. What I want to do now is bring this 150 degrees a little bit closer to body temp. I would ideally like to get it down to about 120, 115 degrees. And so we're just gonna stand here and wait until my lovely little thermometer that's what I wanted to say. Now, the reason we're just standing here and letting this cool a bit is because as drinks, just in general, get closer to body temperature. In humans, that is, you know, around 198 to maybe 100 degrees, you are able actually to perceive more of the intricate and nuanced flavors within whatever it is that you're drinking. That's not to say that new flavors or sweetness are being added to the drink. Like there's, there's no additives here. There's no like, you know, real changing of the flavor, but by the temperature coming down, your perception of the flavor changes. Okay, we are now at 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been about two minutes. Now, if you wanted to try out this experiment at home, for sure you could wait the four minutes or five minutes or however long it takes for your espresso to cool down. But at the same time, when you do that, you allow the crema on top of your espresso 
to dissipate. The more oxidation happens, the more your espresso begins to break down. And at some point, it's just not pleasant anymore. Like we get to a point where that sweetness has disappeared and we're back to bitterness. So here's my hack. This hack takes a little bit of planning. You probably have to think about this the night before or maybe a couple hours before. But what I like to do on occasion when I'm feeling a little extra fancy is I like to put my espresso cups in the freezer. <laughs> See, they're just in here right next to my embarrassing amount of common tier coffee. A little disclaimer here, please do not do this with glass cups or like double walled cups, like the crew of espresso glasses I do occasionally. Only use this hack on like thick ceramic cups. This way we avoid any like kind of thermal shock or like shattering or breakage that could happen when you put a, you know, a material in a very cold environment and then kind of shock it with a very hot thing. Use best practices, please only use ceramics, definitely not glass ever. Anyways, we have some very, very cold cups here. And this is actually what I'm gonna pull my espresso into. This way, as the very, very hot espresso hits the cup, it is pretty much instantly cooling, meaning that we will be able to enjoy our espressos at a nice, cooler temperature. Immediately, we will still be maintaining that very nice crema that is frequently very nice to drink. And uh, yeah, let me go pull some espresso right now into these, and then I can show you actually what temperature it immediately comes out to. I have my espresso pulled into my already chilled cups. I'm just checking right now what the current temperature is. Inside this cup, we are sitting at about 120 to about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So noticeably cooler than when we pulled them into the preheated cups. Meaning, as we sip, we are able to immediately kind of taste all of the espresso in one go. You don't have that initial kind of flash of like kind of temperature shock with a much hotter drink. You're able to enjoy it more as like a body temperature beverage and kind of decipher a little bit more of those nuanced tropical and sweeter flavors in it. Now, I'm not the first one to talk about this idea of cooling cups. I'm not even the first one to use it on the USBC Barista Championship stage. This is something that has been around for a very, very, very long time. And it's a really cool kind of like taste experiment in order order to kind of decipher different flavors and espressos and different ways to experience espresso. I will do one more note on the end of this that this is a kind of experiment that works best with lighter profile coffee. Darker roasts and darker profiles tend to actually taste a lot better when they are served at a warmer temperature. But these lighter coffees, these more delicate ones, the ones that you think of as being fruity and or floral, often need a little bit of a cooler temperature in order to open up a bit more. So yeah, this was my little espresso hack. <laughs> this is something I like to do, not on a regular basis. I like drinking piping hot espresso lots of the time, but occasionally, occasionally, this is kind of a fun thing to do. If you have experience with this or any thoughts about this or have tried this or will try this in the future, I would love to know your experience. Uh, we all experience taste and flavor and aroma very, very differently. And it's really cool to see how little adjustments like cooling your cups affect different people. But yeah, that's the video. Hopefully this has been a little but educational. Hopefully this could be a fun little thing that you potentially integrate into your espresso drinking experience once in a while. But in the meantime, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of this lovely espresso that I have pulled right now. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee. Pretty much everywhere you can find me. I'm here on YouTube once a week, plus shorts. You can also find me on TikTok or Instagram almost every single day. Now I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I will see you next time. Goodbye everyone.